2353. How fascinating to you and to me. Okay, hey, maybe not. Hey, Mike's Daily Podcast. It's good to finally bring you a podcast after a busy Friday that seemed it would continue. Mike's Daily Podcast. On into the weekend and never end. And here we are. It's Mike Matthews. This is a show where we talk about things that you probably already know, but then we talk about it in a way you didn't know. And then you're like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that, Mike. Thank you. How's your life doing? Are you having a lot of, uh, what do you call that? Eggnog? No, because it cannot be found. Mike's Daily Podcast. Anywhere you go, it is gone. All of it gone. All the eggnog. I don't know where it is. Except if you want Mike's Oat Eggnog. Daily I have not tried that yet. Podcast. This is an important show. Yeah! Today, because I'm going to discuss crazy drivers. Yes, in the holidays and everybody... Well, a lot of people have gotten their boosters and they're out and about and, or if you're Canadian, oot and boot, and they are very much, uh, all these drivers, different drivers, different ages, different sizes and shapes, and they're all driving and some of them come to a stoplight and they're in the first person in the st- to, to go through the intersection and it turns green and they don't go through the intersection. They just stay there. And meanwhile, you're 10 cars back and you're wondering why is the guy in the front not going? And questions like these can't be answered on this podcast. And then there is all the kids get let go on Friday before the Christmas holiday and it's at noon and they get ready to go and parents just they gridlock every single road near a school and I guess we're not going to find out about that on this podcast either but that's what happens that's we don't know the answer to that it just happens gridlock and then Elizabeth Holmes I guess uh, as of this moment we don't know the verdict of this trial about her I don't know all the ins and outs but I do know it was brought up that she and her boyfriend, who was also a big part of the company... Here's today's podcast picture. Apparently, we're not having the best of relationships. She was being manipulated by him somehow. There was a word. What was it called? Was it intimacy abuse? I'm not sure I've ever heard that word before. I've heard of domestic abuse, and that's bad. Intimacy abuse... Well, any abuse is bad, but what? That's a new one. That's like that conscious uncoupling thing that Gwen, Gwyneth Paltrow came up. That's right, Basil the Boxer. Oh, the late great Basil the Boxer. And this picture is actually from four years ago. I believe Basil was with me. And we were somewhere in Podcastro Valley. You can see this picture at mikesdailypodcast.com of some wonderful Christmas holiday lights. And I've been posting a lot of those lately. You can see them at mikesdailypodcast.com. I was watching a video from almost two years ago. It was the last time. It was on New Year's Eve, 2018, 19, 2019. And it was the last time Basil ever got to see the beach. And I didn't realize that my lovely lady friend videoed it. And it was pretty emotional for me to watch that because... I watch it now knowing this was the last time he was ever going to see the ocean. And it was it was pretty tough on me. Because he loved the beach. And at this point, his back legs didn't work anymore. And I had to carry him with a harness. His back legs. But his front legs, it was amazing. He had so much power. I, did, I forgot how agile he was. Even, at, even as the uh, disease had... The degenerative myelopathy had taken the use of his back legs away. He was still able to use his front legs very well. And he got down to the beach. And then he had to plop down because it was just really, at that point, you know, he had to go in little spurts. But we sat on the beach together and watched the ocean. And yeah, I was there recently in November. Mid-November, just before my birthday, got to go there. We brought Basil's ashes with us. We didn't scatter them, but we brought them with us and just remembered him and enjoyed that spot. But see a picture 
of the wonderful holiday lights in Podcaster Valley. I was watching a guy who does a lot of travel vlogs, video blogs. Uh, he goes to a lot of places in the South and in Florida. And he was walking around this spot in Orlando, so near Orlando. And all these Christmas lights And they just do some amazing Some of these old Southern style mansions With the columns and whatnot, And they do some crazy lights on those too So we don't have many Of those column type houses here In Podcastro Valley In California in the Bay Area But you see them all over the south That's when you know when you're in the south And if you Run into some of the friends that I made In Huntsville, Alabama Say hi to them for me I talked to someone who went to visit a bunch of friends I have not seen in 10 years And I was told I need to go back People miss me, so I need to go And people probably miss you Are you going to travel this year? I really don't want to travel I may have to do a little bit of it but I don't want to I don't want to deal I did it back in October And the masks on the plane thing Is very annoying Maybe if I did it more often I'd be used to it But yikes Not a fan Okay By the way Quick reminder You can hear my radio show Tomorrow At every Sunday From 9am To 4pm And there's a link At mikesdailypodcast.com I play a bunch of great Upbeat music From the 70s, 80s, and 90s I play some Bon Jovi tomorrow And I was thinking about Bon Jovi Not the man John Bon Jovi But the band Bon Jovi Kind of like remember Chris Daughtry And then his band was called Daughtry Oh He had some horrible news happen recently I won't go into that I will go into as we go outside We go out Of Cafe Anyway Somewhere in Podcastro Valley The last place on earth I will go into discussing Eric Clapton So I listened to Stand and Deliver The song that he wrote with Van Morrison I am huge fans I'm a fan of both of those people They're probably fans of each other I love them both Very much as musicians And their songs have made me very happy over the years But this collaboration Stand and Deliver I'll say the music The instrumentation behind it With the blues riff and everything Is wonderful And if you did not know What it was about You may not even like Come up with an opinion about it But when you know That it is about Two guys griping about the fact That there's a A a virus out there that there's a pandemic happening And it's just treated all nonchalant And that the government What this really is The real disease is the government Is in, uh, putting too much Is uh, grabbing too much control Over our lives And that's basically what they're singing about When you find out <laughs> the behind the scenes Now then this comes down to Well that's what the media says It's not really what Yeah it is what Eric Clapton says It is what Van Mor- Morrison say And it's, it's, it is about that They are anti-vaxxers They think this vaccine is not needed And why put that into your body And I just had the flu shot I haven't been able to get my booster yet I spoke to my doctor She said I might have to go through CVS or Walgreens or, And that's always a nightmare uh, I, I, I do have an appointment for some time in late January to get it From my doctor But she was suggesting to try and get it beforehand And I discussed with her About the whole anti-vax thing She's a very intelligent woman I will say I do feel a little bit like She's more of a data, data entry person Because she, all she's doing is Typing in Okay let's see Mike's got this wrong with him He's got this wrong with him He needs to have this test done That test done This done And it's all data entry And we go over the same material We went over last year And the exam part Takes all of like five seconds It's super fast But And I I disagree with that But This fear of vaccines My whole question is Is it really come down to 
the whole Theranos thing Back to Elizabeth Holmes She talked about often The reason why she created Theran- Theranos Is it Th- Theranos? Is it the guy from the Marvel movies? That's Thanos, sorry I don't know Some kind of connection going on But I often wondered About people like So Elizabeth Holmes created This company Because she's afraid of needles Afraid of the Getting Having to give blood And having your You know what There's a solution to that And that is Look the other direction (laughs) Don't watch them do it Don't watch them Put the shot into your body Or take the blood Out of your body You look away You let the experts Do their job And you have to have A little faith A little trust It's interesting So one of the biggest Anti-vaxxers I know He does a show and I actually told my doctor about this And she was not happy Because <sighs> Well I have something to do With getting this guy on the air It's very frustrating Because I disagree with his whole Anti-vax attitude And you know what You might be an anti-vaxxer And you might agree with him And there's freedom of speech Misinformation however Anyway Cafe anyway The doctor's like Well is he spreading Misinformation And I'm saying To her Yes well he says This that And the other thing And she goes Well you know what That is misinformation She was not exactly Pleased with it Hearing about it But this guy That's spreading The misinformation Is a man of faith And here you go Having no faith In doctors All you have faith Is in God But at some point What about the people that God You know people have There's some There are a lot of Christians that have gotten vaccinated I know a lot of them I don't get it Why has this become so political Why has this become a religious non-religious thing A liberal conservative thing It's just ridiculous It's a life and death thing in the end And there are many Many conservative talk show hosts That have died Because they refuse to get vaccinated And they're dead now They could have had the vaccine Their symptoms could have been much less Would they have still died? I don't know I'm not God I don't know that answer But Common sense would say Not likely So Eric Clapton's bashing Rolling Stone Because they've they've done an article recently All about how He's Turned into an anti-vaxxer And the latest Eric Clapton news Is he sued somebody Who was offering To sell online on eBay For $11 A bootleg I believe it was a bootleg of a concert That he did as I understand it So he went Took her to court And she lost So now she is responsible for paying for All the legal bills So that comes out to $4,000 Somebody And we live in a world today Where we we quote people that tweet So However odd that is Somebody tweeted Let's just be honest They just said this Somebody said this And it was caught on the internet And they said the following They said Well Eric Clapton Could have just given the lady $11 Instead he went and forced her to pay him $4,000 Or she had to pay $4,000 And this lady is is A 50 something German woman I believe From what I remember from the article That I read early this morning Why Eric Clapton Would He's got that on his That's on his now his Not his tombstone but That's following him around the internet A lot of people are upset at Eric Clapton So anti-vaxxer He's Punishing his fans Not a good place to be Yet 20 years ago Or 30 years ago When If I could change the world We were all singing that song That song won a bunch of awards Number one on the charts Anyway I hope Cafe Anyway Eric turns it around Speaking of music NPR has this show (laughs) Called Is it all things music Or all music considered Or something to that effect Hey, they had their top 20 list The top 50 songs of the year These are the best songs And I listened to a couple of them Oh my gosh These are the best songs Whiny 
uh, that same affect affectation or pacing or timbre or whatever you want to call it, the style of singing that sounds like every other young person singing today, that forced un it's just not real. It's not from the heart. It's this Do you know what I'm saying? It's like they tried to copy Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, they try and copy a style where it's like we've heard it all before. And they're like, oh, this is the best stuff. This is NPR. We play the best music. No. How much money did you get, NPR, for playing that song? Hey, let's talk about prostate cancer. That's where this show is going. Not that the show will give you prostate cancer, but one of the interesting things my doctor told me, because she goes, do you want to take uh, have a prostate exam? A prostate Cancer, an exam for prostate cancer. And I said, Well, yeah, it sounds like something I should do. She goes, Is there a history of prostate cancer in your family? And I said, I don't think so. But apparently, the test is not accurate right now. You would think, I need to take the test. I need to find out. But you could have a result that tells you you have it when you really don't. Or tells you you don't have it when you really do. She says it's not exact yet. So what are common tests and procedures for prostate cancer? There is an exam, and I think she was referring to this, where they actually, well, they, (laughs) it involves a hand and a glove And I pretty much won't go into the rest, but you know where the prostate is generally. So you know what they have to do with that, with those instruments involved. They do a test like that. They also do a blood test that checks for prostate specific antigen or PSA. Also an ultrasound uses a small size probe inserted where exactly you would think it would go to obtain images of the prostate. And then there's a biopsy where they take a, a, or a babopsy if you watched uh, my big fat Greek wedding. A small sample of the prostate mass is taken for microscopic examination to assess the type and severity of the cancer. So it all comes down to, now I, I don't know exactly what she was saying was inaccurate. Maybe it was the blood test. I think she was probably referring to the blood test that it could it's it's not specific enough is what she was saying but it all comes down to your symptoms do you show symptoms of prostate cancer one of them being uh, having a difficult time being able to do number one or you have to do number one a lot or you can't really do number one And then there's also a pain or discomfort in the pelvic area. Bone pain is mentioned here. And then if you see blood in that area. Now, more than 3 million cases per year. It is a cancer of the prostate gland, a part of the male reproductive system. So women, congratulations. You don't have to worry about this. The prostate is a small walnut-shaped gland in males that produces, well, the fluid. Let's just call it the fluid that uh, men make. (laughs) Okay. And yes, it's very dangerous and life-threatening. It can be. And I'll tell you, I have lost two friends because of it. One of them, one of the guys, he did a fantastic podcast called Pod Zeppelin. I miss him very much. He was younger than me. And he had it when he was younger. Had to have a, a test. Uh, have have a, the surgery for it. Um, and then had to deal with the consequences of the surgery. And then it came back, unfortunately. And then somebody that we both worked for and used to make jokes about. Because this guy was kind of odd. He would talk to you for long periods of time And he would not pick up on the subtle 
uh, nonverbal cues that you were done with listening to him and you wanted to leave. Let's say I got to go somewhere. You would actually be walking out of his office and he'd still be talking to you, carrying on a conversation like you were still. Uh, it was crazy. But he also passed, ironically enough, of the same thing that the other guy had. Well, only he contracted it much later in life. But yeah, so it is something if you're male to be aware of and to know the symptoms and there is medication for it. Treatments include chemotherapy, medications to stop the hormone activity, radiation therapy and surgery. These can be used alone or in combinations to treat cancer. And this was pulled from Bing. They have actually some, uh, they've pulled some medical information that they use. Uh, they do say, of course, this is just for informational purposes, consult a medical professional for advice. But their information was reviewed by a panel of doctors. And they actually call this, the name of it is Focus Medica. But there's more information on the Bing.com website about that. But thought I'd pass that along to you. Two males. And if you're a female, you probably know a male. That you probably have a male friend somewhere in this world. And it's good to know for those purposes. But I hope everyone you know and love are going to be well into the new year, into 2022, and that all will be well and all shall be well. And um, I don't want to say the rest of that saying because I'm not British. <laughs> it sounds really pretentious when an American says it because it's a very British saying. But anywho, when a British person says it, that saying sounds good. So get a pr British person to say the all shall be well thing. And then then all manner of things will be well when they do that because it sounds really cool. I love British accents. There's so many. There's a myriad of them. And I know that because I have BritBox. And I'm like, what is that accent? Oh, that's from the north part of the country, apparently. What? Really? What about that one? Oh, that's called a... Uh, the, the, the really complicated name one that the, the Welsh, the, the Wales, the Celtic one. There's all kinds. Those, some of them, it's not even English you're hearing anymore. But whatever, we're outside a cafe anyway with all these birds. I think these birds all flew from Ireland, so they're all having a great time. Or maybe they're from Scotland. Aren't they part of the EU still? Or is that Ireland? I need to get on a plane and fly and put on a mask and explore the world. And find out more. But here we are outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley 10, the last place on earth. Look who's here. Hello, Michael Mass. It's Madame Rudebega. I feel very sad about Eric Clapton. Ooh. Did you guys date? Yes. I bet he was pretty wild. Yes. Did you know Layla? No. Okay. Yeah, that was that song. He wrote that one. Wow. The guy that wrote Layla wrote Stand and Deliver. That's pretty shocking. Hey, another interesting thing about Eric Clapton is that he was not in the Traveling Wilburys. Look who else is here. Hello, Dave, Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, we are not going to express our opinion either way about vaccines. They. Yeah, we don't believe in him, dude. Wow. Wow. You Gosh, I got some anti-vaxxers out here too. It's a wow, wow, wow. hodgepodge of people. Ahoy, polloi, here at Cafe Anyway. Oh yeah, Eric was heavily into drugs at one point in his life, and then he got through it and uh, I think he went to some I think he had electrotherapy is that what I heard from behind the music that VH1 show so you know maybe he did some of the drugs that involve needles and he had a bad experience with that I don't know 
But that's It may be in the Rolling Stone article I need to read At any rate I don't really watch um, Much For read You read the Rolling Stone However I have watched the Rolling Stone video That included David Byrne interviewing Lord That was entertaining But I have not read much Rolling Stone lately Because they do seem to Only write articles about A few musicians that they really love And then the rest of the world forget about it So If it's the same people that NPR is talking about On the all songs considered All music considered show I don't know But I hope you listen to some good music Maybe you can Make some some suggestions At my number 336MM daily 3 plus 3 equals 6 MM is a Mike Matthews daily As in what this podcast tries to be But gets interrupted Maybe we'll do one tomorrow And be more in the daily world We'll see But till then Thank you for listening And I'm gonna go fix a thermostat Yeah Oh And next show It will be Shelly Shuhart Floyd the Foreman And John Deere the Engineer <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.